When you have multiple workbooks which contain data, what method are you using to combine that data? Are you interested in combining a single tab from each workbook or combining all tabs and all workbooks? And what happens if a new workbook of data is added to your folder that you need to incorporate? Well, no matter what you're after, we'll cover this straightforward solution to all of those questions today. If you want to follow along, I've included the sample files in the description. Let's get started. For the first example, let's combine these 10 workbooks which contain one single tab of sales data. The final output we hope to achieve will be a pivot table where we can analyse the total weekly sales and the total sales across each product type. To get started, let's navigate to the data tab and then let's extend the get data drop down. From here, we can choose many different sources, but we want to extract data from a file and then from a folder, seeing as we're interested in combining all files that are contained within a dedicated folder. This launches a file explorer window, so we can choose the order files folder and click open. We see all of the files from weeks one through to week 10 that are contained within the folder we selected. We don't want to load the file details into Excel. Instead, we want to load the information contained within these files. So, well, we need to do some transformation steps first. And for this, we can choose Transform Data. This launches the Power Query Editor window. In the content column, you will notice that we have the option to combine the file data. Power Query then asks us what information within our files would we like to combine. Each of our files contain only one tab called Canada, so we can choose this from the menu and then click OK. This is now starting to look a bit better. Now we have the contents of each file combined together into one single output query. The source file column contains the name of the week and I'm interested in using this to analyse the data. I only want the names of the week so we can go ahead and choose to split this column by delimiter. Our delimiter is a hyphen sign so we can choose custom and then type the hyphen. When we click OK to confirm, we can see that our data has been separated into two columns. We don't need the second column so we can go ahead and remove it. As a final step, I'm going to rename this first column by double clicking on it and then renaming it as week number. I will also rename the last column as sales. So now that we're all done with our transformation steps, we can go ahead and load this to Excel by navigating to the file tab and then choosing the close and load to option. We want to be able to analyse this data in a pivot table, so let's choose pivot table report and then click OK. I will go ahead and choose item and sales from my pivot table so I can see what the total sales are for every single product that are contained within all 10 files which we have combined. We could also summarise the sales by week by choosing our week number instead of the item. From here, we can add a pivot chart by navigating to the insert tab, choosing recommended charts, and then choosing the recommended clustered column chart. This gives us a nice summary of the sales information for each week of our combined data set. The great thing about Power Query is that once it's set up, it doesn't require any adjustment to consume new information. We based our query on consuming all files contained within a folder. So if we were to add an additional file to that folder, we would expect Power Query to consider the new file also. I'm going to add another file, which is the data for week 11. Now, if I go back to Excel and refresh all within my workbook, we can see that week 11 enters both the pivot table and the pivot chart. We seem to have a little bit of a sorting problem here. Week 10 and week 11 appear before week 2, both in our pivot table and in the pivot chart. So how can we solve this sorting issue? 
On the right hand side we have a navigation panel called Queries and Connections which shows us the power queries contained within this workbook. If we right click on the final query step we can go ahead and choose Edit and this will relaunch the Power Query Editor window. If we could somehow add leading zeros in these weak numbers so that all weak numbers containing two digits, then we should be able to sort the data from weeks 1 to 11. To do this, I'm going to split the weak number column again by delimiter. So we can choose space this time so that the text and the numbers get their own dedicated column. Now that we've isolated the numbers, we can add leading zeros to them. Let's go ahead and add a custom column which will contain our corrected weak numbers. To add a leading zero, we need to use one of Power Query's functions called TextPad Start. This function takes three arguments. The first is the text that we want to have, so for us this is going to be the data contained within the week two column. The second argument is the count of characters which we want to be contained in the final output. For us, this is going to be two characters. And the final argument is the text character that we want included at the beginning of our text. And for us, this is a zero. The TextPad start function expects the first argument input to be text. But because our input value is a number, we must first convert it to text. And we can do this using the text from function. So now that our formula is complete, let's call this new column week number. And then finally, we can go ahead and click OK. And perfect. Now we have a column which contains two digits in every number. If we try and sort the output based on this new column and choose ascending, you will see that weeks 10 and 11 no longer come before week 2 and instead go all the way to the bottom. We can also see that we've lost the word week within our week number column. So to add this back, let's go ahead and edit the custom column formula. To do this, we just need to click on the settings button where the custom column step was inserted. Within quotation marks, we can add the word week with a space followed by an ampersand sign, then click OK to confirm. Now that we're finished with the adjustments, we can navigate back to file and then choose close and load. We can see that our pivot table and pivot chart update and now the data is ordered correctly from week 1 to week 11. So now we know how to combine multiple files which contain a single worksheet tab. What about combining multiple files which contains multiple tabs? For this example, we've got the same 10 files, but instead of having one single tab or one country's information, you can now see that these files have multiple tabs or multiple countries' information. Let's again navigate to the Data tab. Let's expand the Get Data drop-down, choose from File and then from Folder. Let's choose the folder called Order Files and click Open. We get this familiar window showing us all of the files that are contained within the folder we selected. We don't want to import the file details to Excel, so let's again go ahead and click Transform Data. I'm only interested in the content contained within these files and the file name, so I can select both of these columns, then right click and choose Remove Other Columns. The method to extract all of the contents is by adding a custom column. So in the Add Column tab, let's choose Custom Column. To extract the content information from these files, we can use the Excel Workbook function, and then we can tell this function we're interested in extracting the content. When we click OK, you will see that we now have this new custom column added. If we expand the column, we get a full breakdown of all of the objects that are contained within all workbooks. We can see these objects from the custom kind column. All of these objects are in fact worksheets. If you had the other objects, like tables or charts, they would also appear here. The only column that we're interested in is the name column, the custom name column and the custom data column. The custom data column is the column which contains all of the numerical values for each worksheet of our workbooks. 
If you click on any of these tables, you will get a preview at the bottom showing you what data is contained within each table. Because we're only interested in these three columns, I'm going to select these and then remove all of the others. I can expand the custom data column now so that the details are present within our query. So we're making some progress now. We have the file name which contains the week we're interested in, the tab name within each file which contains the country, and all of the details within that tab. You will notice that the headers are included all of the way throughout our data set. So to remove these, I'm going to make the first row as headers. Then I'm going to filter the item column and remove the word item so that we only get left with the product names within this column. Let's split this first column using the delimiter so that we can isolate the week names from the rest of the file name text. I will choose custom again and then put a hyphen sign in the box and click OK. We can now remove this column as we don't need it anymore. And as a final step, I will rename the first column as week number, the second column as country, and then the final column as sales. So that's it, we're all done with Power Query. Let's navigate to File and choose the Close and Load To option. Again, like we did in our last example, let's use a pivot table report and then click OK. I'm going to add country to the pivot table and then sales. Let's insert a pivot chart again by navigating to the insert tab, choosing recommended charts and then choosing the clustered column chart. So great, now we know the sales for all of the countries combined together. If we wanted, we could also view what the total sales are across all products and all countries by removing the country and adding item. If we would like to get an idea of the total sales per week, then we simply need to remove the item and add the week number. Again, we do have a slight problem where the week numbers aren't correctly sorted, but this can be corrected following the same steps we observed in our first example. Now that you know how to dynamically combine data with Power Query, will this change any of your current workflows or processes? I am always interested to get your thoughts, so let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And as always, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.